friends i am krishna kumar and today i am going to discuss about uh, an important strategy for bpsc 67 exam so basically i am talking about uh, anthropology optional so many uh, students who are taking anthropology as their optional paper and some students are thinking about anthropology optional so anthropology so no doubt anthropology is very uh, marks fetching optional paper in civil services exam right and in this perspective uh, we are going to a trained analysis of anthropology in bpsc exam so uh, when you are going to learn anthropology for bpsc exam so first important thing is that our syllabus is divided into mainly three groups first section one second section two and third section three right and section two is further divided into two alternative group that is 2a and 2b so in section 1 we will study about socio cultural anthropology and section 2a we will study physical anthropology and section 2b we will study anthropological theories and section 3 we will study indian anthropology so these are the three important section but uh, this two have option either we select a physical anthropology or anthropological theory i suggest that you have to go with physical anthropology so we are not going to talk about anthropological theory because if you want to get high marks in bpsc exam you should go with physical anthropology so basically today i am going to talk with you some important strategy with trend analysis but recently there uh, there has been major change in anthropology optional trend in bpsc exam after 62 63 if we try to analyze about the question pattern in anthropology so we have one or two standard question in each years so if you want to get a more than 200 marks in anthropology so we have give attention about that question we have to develop capability to write answer about that question because that question is very important if you want to get more than 200 marks so one thing here you try to understand each section 
has 100 marks 100 marks and 100 marks right what should be done for the preparation of these three important section so first i am going to talk about socio cultural anthropology and in sense uh, socio cultural anthropology first uh, topic that is meaning and a scope of anthropology right and branches of anthropology that is mentioned in our syllabus and in branches of anthropology there are five branches which are mentioned in our syllabus these are socio-cultural anthropology physical anthropology archaeological anthropology linguistic anthropology and applied anthropology so this topic is very important for us because if you try to observe about the question of BPSC, so generally question asked from that topic. The topic is important for question point of view, but that topic is also important for the understanding of anthropology. Because if we want to develop general understanding on anthropology, so we should study this topic in detail and recently some question asked from that topic that is very a standard question today i will discuss on that but first important thing when you are going to study that topic in our syllabus meaning a scope and development of anthropology and branches of anthropology that is means but when we are going to study that topic, we should study a relevance of anthropology in general and particular when we are going to study about socio-cultural anthropology then we should also prepare about the relevance of socio-cultural anthropology. In such way, we have to prepare relevance of physical or biological anthropology, relevance of archaeological anthropology, relevance of linguistic anthropology and relevance of applied anthropology. These topics are very important for us. Another, we not only study about the scope of anthropology, but we have to also study a scope of socio-cultural anthropology, a scope of physical anthropology, a scope of archaeological anthropology, a scope of linguistic anthropology, and a scope of applied anthropology. But the, some important thing which, which is not mentioned in our syllabus directly BPSC also asks question on that, right? As for example, methods of anthropology. This is not mentioned in our syllabus. But BPSC has asked question on that, right? Recently in 66th exam one question asked by BPSC why is anthropology called holistic science why is anthropology called why is 
anthropology called holistic science. This is the first part of that question and then we have to right, discuss its relationship with life science. Second part of this question is discuss its relationship with life science. So, first important thing is that method is not mentioned in our syllabus and relationship with other discipline or relationship with life science it is also not mentioned in our syllabus but BPSC has asked question on that so when <coughs> we are going to study anthropology we have to study relationship with other discipline for that topic because that topic is very important for us that topic gave us very good insight for the understanding of anthropology and for question point of view this topic is also very important for us because BPSC has asked again and again question from that topic and these types of question when you are going to write the answer of these types of question and that question is first question in 66th exam. So if we are capable to write first question in the right direction that is positive for us. So one thing here we have to study about method of anthropology and second thing we have also studied about nature of anthropology. So basically today I am discussing about uh, that topic because that topic is very important and that also give us some insight about the changing train in BPSC exam. right? Another important thing is that basically in 65 exam one important question asked by BPSC which is also not directly mentioned in our syllabus explain the meaning and a scope of economic anthropology with a special reference to substantive and formal school of thought. So this topic is directly not mentioned in BPSC syllabus. But when you try to analyze about UPSC syllabus, in UPSC syllabus, relationship with other discipline is directly mentioned, right? In which we have to study relationship with other discipline means relationship of anthropology with other discipline like social science, behavioral science, life science, medical science, earth science, humanities. So here I want to say that if you are going to prepare BPSC exam, so always alert that if there, there are some similarities between BPSC and UPC syllabus, so then you have to also focus on that part of your syllabus. Because in economic anthropology basically, which I already discussed, that question came in 65th exam substantive and formal school of thought related to economic anthropology. That question I have discussed earlier 
which is available on my YouTube channel. So here I want to give you some important insight. If you want to take very good marks in anthropology, then you have to give attention about that thing. Otherwise, you are not capable to get high marks in anthropology in BPSC exam. Another important thing happened recently because in 64th BPSC exam and 65th BPSC exam, we have seen there are many students who are qualifying in that day exam. They are also preparing UPSC exam. So now condition became more tough. In this condition, we have to give attention about that. So for the understanding of that, because today I am going to talk about the basics of anthropology and basically I am going to talk about that question which asked by BPSC in 66th. Why is anthropology called holistic science and discuss its relationship with life science. So that is very basic question but they there are many students who are learning anthropology is holistic science. But here we have to write our answer on holistic science. Approximately 250 watts. Right? And in relationship we also we have to write 250 watts. So, when we are going to write our answer, what should be done? So basically, I am going to discuss about that. So first important thing is that when you are trying to write about anthropology is holistic science, right? So first day, you have to define anthropology. And because if we are going to write answer about any question, at first we have to write introduction. So for that question, when we are going to write answer, we have to define anthropology. But one thing remember you have, is there any definition which is given by any prominent anthropologist which give us insight about anthropology is holistic science. And if you have knowledge about that or you are remembering that, then you have to start your answer through that definition, right? Here, I suggest you an important anthropologist that is Glucon, Clyde Glucon. He was American anthropologist and he wrote a book named Mirror for Man, right? And he defined anthropology is the mirror for man. This is the very simple definition and this is very important definition because further Glucon explained that anthropology is the holistic science. So if you have knowledge about that, he was an important anthropologist who have given insight about that anthropology is holistic science. And he wrote a book named Mirror for Man. In that day book, 
he defined anthropology as a mirror for man and anthropology as a holistic science. So in introduction, you have to define anthropology in this way. This is very important for us. But after that, we have to write why it is called holistic science, right? Why anthropology is called holistic science? So basically, when we are going to write about that section of answer, why? It is holistic science. So first important thing is that anthropology is the holistic study of mankind. So here we have to explain what is holism, right? Means what do we mean by holism? So it has two important meaning, right? First, all aspect means anthropology is holistic study of mankind. It means anthropology study total aspect of mankind, each and every aspect of mankind. Or second thing is that integration or Anthropology is the holistic study of mankind. Anthropology is the study of man in totality. And anthropology also deals with how different various aspects of man are deeply integrated with each other. Right? So for explanation of that, two important things means total aspect of mankind. So total aspect of mankind means when we are going to study anthropology, we have to study biological aspect of mankind. In biological aspect of mankind, we study human biological evolution and biological variation. So for the study of human biological evolution, we study primatology, we study paleopathology, we uh, study paleoanthropology. These are the very important sub-branches of biological anthropology, which deals with the study of human evolution. And second, in a, the study of human biological variation, we study human genetics, population genetics, ratiology, ecological anthropology, medical anthropology, human anatomy, human physiology, human osteology, human ecology, human epidemiology, human growth and development. So these are the important aspect related to human biological variation. So we study these important aspect of mankind in the branch of biological anthropology. Second important thing, when we are going to study socio-cultural anthropology, we study human social aspect in social anthropology, economic aspect in economic anthropology, political aspect in political anthropology, legal aspect in legal anthropology, psychological aspect in psychological anthropology. We also study various important symbol in human culture in symbolic anthropology. We also study interpretive anthropology. We also study demography, human demography in demographic anthropology. We not only study primitive society, but in urban anthropology, we study urban society, modern society, 
in industrial anthropology we study about industrial society now we have business anthropology in which we have to study business management now we study visual anthropology right educational anthropology developmental anthropology so these are the important aspect of mankind which we study in socio cultural anthropology in archaeological anthropology we study human cultural evolution and development of human culture and in linguistic anthropology we study origin evolution and development of language in the course of time we also study about the structure of language and we also study social aspect of language or in ethnolinguistic we study the language of particular society we also study how language interrelated with culture and in applied anthropology we also study application of the knowledge of anthropology for the betterment of mankind so these are the important aspect of mankind which we are going to study so first important thing you can make a diagram and in center you can write anthropology and in periphery you have to name different aspect which i already discuss of mankind and first you have to so this is holistic study of mankind this is whole study of mankind total aspect of mankind and these all aspect interrelated with each other therefore we say anthropology is the holistic science first important point so in first you have to discuss that second important thing you have to give attention about biocultural approach right you have to give attention about that because anthropology is holistic science because it follow biocultural approach for the study of all aspect of mankind so basically in anthropology when we are going to study about total aspect of mankind we have to follow by bio, biocultural approach here what do you mean by biocultural approach means in anthropology mainly we study human biological aspect and cultural aspect right because language is also a part of culture and in archaeological anthropology we study about cultural evolution but when we are going to study human biological aspect or cultural aspect both are integrated with each other and both influence to each other so you have to give some example how biological aspect of mankind deeply interlinked with cultural aspect of mankind when we are going to study anthropology as for example when we are going to study human biological evolution right so when we are going to study human biological evolution we can't understand human biological evolution without understanding of human cultural evolution because human evolution is a biocultural process that is biocultural process and that the biocultural process is started in very long years ago in prehistoric period so whenever we try to understand about human biological evolution on the basis of fossils record we can't keep able to interpret fossils record holistically without utilization of archaeological data because when we are going to 
study human biocultural evolution or human biological evolution, we found both fossils remains and material culture remains. So anthropologists make inter link between biological remains and culture remains. So we utilize biocultural approach for the understanding of each and every aspect of mankind in anthropological point of view. Not only we follow biocultural approach, but we also follow biocultural ecological approach. Right? When we are going to understand human in holistic perspective, we have to make interrelation between biological, cultural and ecological factor. Because we are biocultural organism, biocultural animal. So human interact with their environment through their culture and on the basis of their biological feature. So anthropologists also give attention about that. And therefore anthropology is known as a holistic science. Another important thing is that when you are going to study anthropology, it has longest time frame. Why it is holistic science? Because in anthropology, we study about earliest man in the course of human evolution. Not only earliest man, but we started a study primate evolution that take palace in 65 million years ago. And from that, we study not only from that primitive people, but also a present modern society. So from past to present, we study whole aspect of mankind. Means we not only study contemporary society, we also study prehistoric people, proto-historic people, historical people. So therefore it is holistic science. Anthropology study both past and present. Another important thing is that when we try to understand, anthropologists not only interested to study about past human beings, not only interested to study about human diversity in the course of time, but we also study people from all over the world who live in different ecological condition, different environmental condition, different social status, different technological level. So our subject matter covered all types of social structure, all types of economic activity, all types of political structure, different types of religious uh, behavior, psychological behavior. So we study each and every aspect of mankind and their interrelationship. And therefore, anthropology is known as a holistic science. So we study all types of social structure. Here you can mention, we study all types of social structure. So therefore anthropology is known as a holistic science, right? So this is a very important for us. When we are going to study anthropology, we say it is a holistic science, but how we can say it is a holistic science? We required proper data, proper knowledge. And that question has by BPSC that give us insight about there is some important changes happen in BPSC exam. And if you 
alert about that changes then you can capable to write your answer in the right perspective second parts of this question is discuss its relationship with life science so when we are going to study relationship between anthropology and lab science this topic is not mentioned in bpsc exam directly but uh, this topic is uh, clearly mentioned in upsc syllabus so those uh, student who are preparing bpsc as well as upsc exam they are familiar with that right but uh, when we are going to write answer on a relationship between anthropology and life science or any other discipline here i give you uh, an important structure by which you can capable to present your answer in very structured form so when you are going to write your answer first you have to define what is anthropology and then what is life science then you have to talk about interrelations right here interrelationship means similarity first point and second point is differences you have to give attention so when we are talking about similarity in that section you have to write subject matter method influences and application right so first day when you are going to write answer and try to understand how anthropology is interrelated with life science so first you can see anthropology is the holistic study of mankind while life science mainly concerned with the study of living organism and its organic process but both the discipline are deeply interrelated with each other because both are interested to study about human biological evolution and variation try to understand here uh, we have to give attention about that means there are some similarities between anthropology and life science and first important similarity in their subject matter because in human biology that is a branch of life science we study human evolution and human biological variation in anthropology basically in biological anthropology we study human evolution and human biological variation so in anthropology we study paleoanthropology in life science we study paleo botany paleo zoology primatology we study primatology in anthropology as well as life science we study paleopathology in anthropology and life science we study human genetics population genetics ecology human ecology human growth and development human epidemiology in both anthropology and life science we also study human anatomy human osteology human physiology in life science as well as anthropology therefore both disciplines are deeply interrelated with each other <coughs> second important thing is that 
we have to discuss about method right because if there are some similarity in their subject matter then there are some similarity in their methods also because when anthropologist studied human evolution on the basis of fossils remains so they are doing field work for discovering fossils remains or for the excavation of fossils remains life scientists also does this thing when they try to study about human biological evolution and when we study human biological variation both anthropologist and life scientist utilize some uh, laboratory method like when we are going to study human genetics right so we have to do dna analysis in laboratory so here both utilize some special kinds of field work and laboratory method for the understanding of human evolution and human biological variation third important thing in in influences when you are going to a study human in totality in anthropology and when you are going to a study human biology in life science so there are some influences of a life science on anthrop and anthropology has also influenced to life science how we have to give example so when we are going to study anthropology we we study molecular anthropology that develop in anthropology due to impact of life science on anthropology we develop epidemiological anthropology we study human growth and development that they directly shows influence of life science on anthropology but they, due to impact of anthropology there are development of social biology in life science right that give us information about there has been some influence of anthropology on life science so here you have to talk about that and after that in application so basically those data and knowledge we gathered from anthropology and from life science that knowledge and data utilized for the betterment of mankind and therefore anthropology and life science are deeply interrelated with each other right so here you have to write that but after that you have to give attention about differences and that the part of answer is more important than that because when question ask on a relationship so we have to write about differences also and basically in this question examiners want to know how exactly anthropology and life science are different so when you are going to write the differences you have to make a two side column in one side you have to write anthropology right you have to write on anthropology and another side you have to write life science right and you have to write clearly or in a point format how uh, there are differences between anthropology and life science so after that you have to write therefore there are some similarity between anthropology and life science but instead of this similarity there are fundamental differences between anthropology and life science right so that differences is that anthropology is holistic study of mankind here you have to remember 
इवन लाइफ साइंस से स्टडीड ह्यूमन बायोलॉजी मीन्स स्टडी ह्यूमन बायोलॉजिकल एस्पेक्ट बट लाइफ साइंटिस्ट फॉलो एटमिस्टिक अप्रोच सो फर्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इज दैट हियर वी फॉलो होलिस्टिक अप्रोच इन लाइफ साइंस दे फॉलो एटमिस्टिक अप्रोच सेकेंड इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इज दैट हियर वेन वी स्टडी ह्यूमन इवोल्यूशन वी फॉलो बायोकल्चरल अप्रोच and here lab scientists follow biological approach only they give focus about biological approach or biological factor when they try to understand about human evolution they mainly focus on biological factor here we focus on both biocultural factor so this is important third important thing is that anthropology is social science right it is social science and life science is natural science and fourth important thing is that it is subjective as well as objective means both subjectivity and objectivity present in anthropology but uh, here more objectivity or it is objective study next uh, here culture is core concept yani anthropologist interested to study about culture culture is basic concept fundamental concept in anthropology but in life science they do not study cultural aspect of mankind and therefore because we study culture so here we follow field work method mainly and that method is participant observation right here they do not follow participant observation method because lab scientist does not interested to study about cultural aspect of mankind right and lastly you can see that knowledge and data gathered by anthropologist are useful for the solution of bio cultural social economic political psychological aspect of mankind and here knowledge and data gathered by life scientist mainly utilized for the solution of biological problem of mankind so therefore anthropology and life science have fundamental differences but in instead of these differences both life scientist and anthropologist working together and sharing their tools technique data with each other for better understanding of mankind and therefore life science and anthropology are deeply interrelated with each other because both are complementary to each other so this is conclusion so in conclusion you can write therefore both have fundamental differences but both discipline are deeply interrelated with each other because both are complementary to each other so on the basis of that discussion you can write your answer in right perspective so basically today uh, i uh, give focus on that a question and through that question i give suggestion to you there is some important changes happen in bpsc question pattern so always alert about that and now it is a time of 
digital educational revolution so i am also available on my online platform right so those who are not capable to come at delhi and those who are interested to join with me they can join with me through my online platform right so thank you and uh, on the basis of that uh, you can understand that thing and if you have any problem then you can call me or uh, send me messages i will very happy to solve your problems right so thank you